One of the best parts of traveling in an RV is the ability to stop and see friends and family along the way. Not only do we get to visit them, but we have found visits to be much easier as we have our home with us. We don't have to be in their house and can live more as neighbors instead of house guests. We had visited our friends on Whidbey before and love living in their driveway for a while, sharing occasional meals, and enjoying the beautiful view they have. This visit was not only fun, but also productive as they helped us get ready to cross into Canada. We arrived on Whidbey Island, Washington to stay a few days before heading into Canada. We had a few last minute packages delivered here that included things like fishing gear from my dad, a few ex officio bug proof clothing items, and a new bike rack. We had decided on the way up that our current bike hauling situation was not the best as the rack on the back impeded the rear slide from opening without lowering the rack. This made quick stops a challenge so we decided upon a bike rack that could mount to the ladder. Another problem we had with the original setup was that the rack hanging so far off the back of the camper would scrape on moderate inclines and we did not want it to impede our flexibility on uneven terrain. Because we were not towing anything, we also decided to drop the Stinger extension hitch because it adds a lot of weight that we were not using. We also left quite a few items that we had brought because we deemed they were not necessary for the trip or we didn't want to leave them in our fifth wheel, including my guitar. With the bike strapped on the new rack, we packed up and hit the road again with our next destination being Abbotsford, Canada. Before getting to the border, we made sure to top off on fuel and propane as we had been told that prices in British Columbia were a bit higher. Probably the cheapest fuel we'll see for quite some time. For the whole summer. Probably. Like the fuel, we're not sure what propane costs are in Canada, so we're gonna fill up here before we uh, cross the border as well. The border's just north of here. Fuel is full, propane's full, we're ready to cross the border. Let's do it. Whoop. Nearing the border, we started to get a bit nervous. We had talked through everything they might ask us at the border. However, we had a unique case that the truck was not ours. I've got some butterflies, but I'm excited. It's gonna be fun. It is gonna be fun. First time in Canada. I'll take my passport out. How about I do that? Good afternoon. Hello. Passport. California? We live in Palm City, Florida. When they saw that we had a California license plate and a Florida residency, they asked us whose vehicle it was. We produced a letter from Lance Campers explaining our trip and granting us permission to drive the vehicle across the border, and the Border Patrol agent read every word. No, sir. Is there a firearm or a weapon on board? No, sir. All right, then. Take care. Thank you. We made it. We're in Canada. From this experience, we would recommend that if you're ever driving someone else's vehicle across international borders, have a signed letter of permission from the owner. Our first stop in Canada was at Costco to stock up on fresh foods that we had not brought across the border and quickly ran into our first differences between Canada and the U.S. Well, it turns out Canadian Costco's don't take Visa. <laughs> so they take MasterCard and we didn't have a MasterCard on us, so then we had to pay in cash. So uh, it was a little bit of a last minute panic at the cash register, but we were able to uh, buy most of our groceries and uh, we're, we're good. We're having a little lunch and then we're gonna continue on. Stocked up, we headed over to visit other RVing friends, John and Peter, who travel full time and share RV how-to information as the RV geeks. I think you people are lost, Alaska's that way. <laughs> You're 
way off course. Aw, oh, shoot. <laughs> we were able to get a site across from theirs and experience full hookups with the Lance for the first time. As this was our first time hooking up to sewer and water, things did not go very smoothly. It turned out that our hoses were not quite compatible with the water inlet and missing a gasket. We also spilled some sewage when opening the drain cap, which was not very pleasant. Oh, oh. Well, I don't help in that situation. Oh, yuck, honey. Oh, the best part to this hassle, however, was getting to test out the unlimited hot water from the Truma and take a real shower. It's amazing to take a shower in the back of a truck bed. I just took a long, hot, comfortable shower, and occasionally it just hits us that we're standing in the back of a truck bed, and I just love it, I just love it. The next few days we spent hanging out with John and Peter, catching up on work and exploring the area. John and Peter also helped us get acclimated to Canada. While things seem very much the same to the US, there are a few differences. One thing we had to get used to was the distance in kilometers, temperature in Celsius, and fuel in liters. We also had to learn the height of the RV in meters so that we could make sure we would make it under bridges. They also taught us how credit cards differ a bit at restaurants, and about a few special Canadian dishes including poutine, a potato cheese dish, and Nanaimo bars, a unique dessert treat. We also had not planned many of our travels in Canada yet, so we spent hours poring over maps. John and Peter were also kind enough to lend us their cleaning gear and help us clean off the first 1200 miles of bugs from the RV by giving it its first bath. You're gonna have to have me do some videoing so it can be clear that I did not do this alone. <laughs> I'm just standing around videoing. <laughs> After a few days of settling into Canada, it was time to move on. We drove from Abbotsford up through the mountains on Highway 5 through Kamloops to Shushwap Lake. Caitlin, you're doing over a hundred. I've never driven this fast in my life. <laughs> we were stopping at Shushwap Lake again to visit friends we had met while RVing who lived there. They provided us with a fantastic spot on the water with an amazing view. We stayed the night and luckily the next day was pretty warm because they had a wake surf boat and had offered to take us out on the lake. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be great. Shushwap Lake is quite large, shaped like an H. Almost two lakes connected together through a spot called the Narrows. It was absolutely beautiful and they took us for a run up the lake to a waterfall where we parked ourselves for lunch. Over lunch, we had a conversation with Denise and Corey about a few more things that may be unique to Canada. Probably the most common thing would be A. <laughs> Which we say that we don't say. Right, until we, we listen to each other, and it's a lot, actually. It comes at the end of something like, that like was amazing, fact. eh? Yeah. I guess the other thing that we find people <clears throat> don't understand is the word bush. A bush means out in the forest. Backcountry forest, bush, yeah. remote. But it doesn't mean a shrub. If we went to shore, we could be in the bush. We don't measure everything in metric, um, like people's weight um, is typically in pounds. Well, we'll convert height, things. Like my height, I wouldn't know what it is in metric, but I know what it is in, in imperial. Right. And it's not much. Yet if. <laughs> If someone told me to go a hundred yards, I wouldn't know what that was. Right. Uh, but if you told me to go however many meters, <clears> then <throat> I would understand that. So we kind of have a bit of a combination mm -hmm. of metric and imperial. 
you shouldn't use US dollars because <laughs> most places will give it to you at par, which is about a 36% loss. Um, but yeah, the American, yeah, they would accept Definitely cards accept all the cards. I would carry some cash just in case so you don't have to use US dollars because it's not a fair conversion that you're going to get. <clears throat> and you know what those look like. They're the colored ones. <laughs> <laughs> and the 50s do have a slight little maple scent to them. Your money is scented? Yes, I think the 50s, I think the 50s and the 50s, 100s yeah. Yeah. have a very slight maple scent to them. Does it come that way or is that just the smell of Canada? Yeah. Just scratch it. <laughs> just scratch and sniff dollar? Yeah. Oh no, my. they come. They'll have Americans everywhere scratching and sniffing our money just to see. <laughs> Even the remote spots that you guys will be traveling through, um, for the most part, are going to take a major credit card, like a Visa or MasterCard or something mm -hmm. like that. Enjoy being in BC. It's so beautiful here. After lunch, we headed back, but not without a stop at an amazing looking rope swing that I just had to try out. Even with the water being so cold from early spring, after taking a dip, we were encouraged to try wake surfing. Their boat is specifically equipped with water tanks inside the hull that can be filled on one side to partially sink the boat and push up an enormous wave. So you put a thousand pounds in one side and that will give you the more weight that's on this side, on the side you're surfing on. Like if you have people, you want them all on that side. Yeah. So it, it just makes a bigger wave. The wave is so big that with some practice, one can actually surf the wave without a rope. Having never tried this before, Corey hopped in the water to show us how it was done. The concept is that you start out with the rope, and once up on the board and the wave is stable, you can toss the rope to the boat and surf. With Corey's assurance that the water temp would not kill us, it was our turn to try this out. I've already been in the water once, and I know it's cold, so... We brought wetsuits for a reason, we're gonna use them. Luckily, we both have extensive experience with wakeboarding, but this was still new. After some trial and error, we figured it out and had an amazing time surfing this beautiful lake accented by snow-capped mountains around us. We surfed until we were absolutely freezing and needed to head back to warm up. So much fun! We had so much fun though. That was awesome. Yep. Oh, surfing in Canada, who knew? <laughs> we would have liked to stay longer as we were having so much fun, but we already were a bit behind schedule, so we headed out as the sun was going down Thank to get you. a few more miles down the road. Along the way, we found a boat launch near Revelstoke for a quick overnight stop. The next leg of our journey was from Shushwap Lake up to Lake Louise on Highway 1 known as the Trans-Canada Highway. Along the way, we learned that we first passed through the Columbia Mountains on our way to the Rockies. If we had more time, we would have loved to explore this area more, as there are multiple lesser-known national parks to explore. We arrived at Lake Louise later in the day, but couldn't wait to check it out. So we've just arrived at the Lake Louise village, and we're gonna just go right up and see Lake Louise before we figure anything out. No plan. It's pretty snowy. <laughs> but it's still winter here. The walk to the lake was short, but we were disappointed to find that the lake was still frozen over and we couldn't see much of the blue-green that it's known for. 
A small section of water was open and we were just able to see the slightest color. Regardless of the condition, we decided to take one trail that was open along the edge of the lake. As we hiked along the lake, we started to notice strange sounds like thunder through the valley. We quickly figured out that what we were hearing was avalanches across the lake. As the snow was melting, it was falling off the sheer rock faces in a spectacular show. What had started out as a disappointment turned out to be an amazing experience, watching the avalanches and experiencing early spring in the mountains. Well, although Lake Louise is mostly snowed in, it's very slippery and cold, we decided to go for a little bit of a hike, and it's awesome. Yeah, I can't believe the just magnitude of this place. Stunning, stunning. We could keep hiking, we would love to keep hiking, but most of the trails are technically closed. We walked up a trail that is- Snow covered. I, snow covered, but we thought it was okay until we got to these avalanche danger signs and we clearly see avalanche, avalanche uh, yeah, remains up, up behind us. So we're not gonna chance this any further, but we've got to see some amazing avalanches. On the other side of the lake from us. It's a bummer that the water is frozen over still, but wow. What an incredible place. Still really cool. We headed back to the camper and found a spot to stay in the overflow parking area just south of the lake. We fell asleep reflecting on all that we had learned about Canada, the amazing adventures we had been having, and excited for the next round in Banff and Jasper National Parks. Thank you.